at the integral test, and now let's consider a few examples. So with an easy example, the series 1 over n squared, let's apply the integral test to this. Well, first of all, we should check that the integral test actually does apply. Right? The function associated with this sequence here, the sequence 1 over n squared, is the function 1 over x squared. Right? When you plug in n for x, you get exactly this business. Now, what do we know about this function? This function is continuous on the interval 1, 2, infinity. It's positive and, right, because I mean it's, it's the, the numerator is 1, which is positive. The denominator is something squared, which is positive as well. And consequently the whole thing is positive. And finally, uh, we need to check for decreasing. Is this a decreasing function? Well, you'll remember now from Cal 1 that all we need to do is show that the derivative is negative. If the derivative is negative, your function is decreasing. And what is the derivative here? The derivative is negative 2 over x cubed. And on the interval 1 to infinity, denominator is positive, numerator is negative, so this is less than 0 on, well, on 1 to infinity. So it satisfies the hypotheses of the integral test. So the series will converge if and only if the integral converges. So let's evaluate the integral. This is an improper integral, so you know how to deal with that. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to n. And you know what this is. This is negative 1 over x from 1 to n which is 1 minus 1 over n and as n goes to infinity this goes to 0 so the whole limit is 1 the integral converges so the series converges Let's consider another one. Very similar, but with 1 over n cubed this time. Right? Again, the function associated to that is 1 over x cubed, which is continuous and positive on the interval 1 to infinity. All we need to do again is verify that the function is a decreasing one and this is easily seen by taking the derivative. Numerator is negative, denominator is positive, function is decreasing. We're good to go. We can apply the integral test
and the series converges if and only if the integral converges. And this, as you know, is just that. For what values of p is this going to converge? For what values of p is this going to diverge? Can we get a general result? Right? Because, I mean, you integrated 1 over n squared, 1 over n cubed. The integrals are very similar, and I'm sure you can generalize to 1 over n to the p. Let's do so. And to generalize in complete generality, we need to worry about what p actually is. Because if p is 1, the integral is completely different. So, let's start with that exact issue. What happens if p is 1? We're looking at the series 1 over n. And, you know, we've treated this on a separate occasion, we, we saw that this series diverges. But, let's put that aside, and let's redo it using the integral test. The answers, as you will see, will coincide. Here, the function associated with 1 over n is 1 over x, right? When x is n, you get exactly 1 over n. So f of x is 1 over x, which is continuous and positive on the interval 1 to infinity. Let's take the derivative, which is negative 1 over x squared, easily seen to be less than 0, right? The numerator is negative, denominator is positive. So the whole fraction is negative. So the function is decreasing. We can apply the integral text. And the integral from 1 to infinity again, being an improper integral is just this. And now what is the antiderivative? You know what's happening here, right? The antiderivative in this case is 
is ln. So this is just ln n, whose limit is infinity. As n goes to infinity, ln of infinity is infinity. So the integral diverges. So the series diverges. What if P is bigger than 1? If P is bigger than 1, well, I'll leave you to check is continuous, positive, and decreasing. You can do that with relative ease. And what's going to happen Let's, so, I mean, assuming that you've worked that out. In other words, assuming that we are in a situation where you are allowed to use the integral task, right? Because it has to be checked. In this case, so this is x to the negative p whose antiderivative is 1 over negative p plus 1, x to the negative p plus 1. No, no dx, what is that? From 1 to infinity. And now, if p is bigger than 1, then if you bring the p to the other side, 1 minus p, or minus p plus 1, is less than 0. So this is really this is really 1 over x to the p minus 1. p is bigger than 1, so p minus 1 is bigger than 0. So this is a positive exponent and when you plug n and 1 in, minus 1 over 1 minus p. And this being a positive exponent, as n goes to infinity, you get a 1 over infinity here. And consequently, the limit is just 1 over 1 minus p. Negative. Negative 1 over 1 minus p. In other words, the integral converges, so the series converges. What about What about if P is less than 1? If P is less than 1, well now we're going to have to consider a few cases. We're going to consider the case where p is between 0 and 1. And if that's the case, then the integral right, first of all you can check that this is still a decreasing function, so we're still fine. 
And the integral is the same, except now p minus 1 is less than 0. Or 1 minus p is bigger than 0. So this thing is going to go to infinity. And there it is. Right? You're going to have some... Uh, the, 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 the series is going to diverge. And finally, what happens if p is bigger than or equal to 0? Well then, your term does not have a limit of 0. So the series diverges by the divergence test. Uh, what are we the other one, if p is, right? If p is less than or equal to zero, p is a negative exponent, so this is really one over. I mean, it's really n negative p is going to be positive, so this is really n to a positive number. The limit is going to be infinity. Let's put all of that together. And state this as a nice result known as the divergence of the uh, P series test well or just the P series which has the form 1 over n to the p. These p series converge if p is bigger than 1 and diverge if p is less than or equal to 1. Uh, in the next part, we'll do some exercises.